Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining me live, those of you who are here, and uh, thanks for watching if you're watching the replay. Um, hopefully, you can all hear me okay. I just had a notification flash up on YouTube, something about the audio, but um, someone in the comments perhaps just let me know you can hear me. That'd be good. So I've got um, a couple of uh, scenes here. The first one we're going to do is a distant view of the lake, Lake Pasivier. And then the second one is another scene of the same lake, Lake Vesivier in France, um, which I actually did a um, on plein air painting of this scene, um, which is uh, which was on YouTube. It's probably now on, well, it is on the um, uh, on Patreon now in the archives. But I thought I'd do a larger version of that, so I'll do that one afterwards. So hello Sue, hello everybody, hello Pam, and everyone can hear fine. That's good. Brilliant. And hello, Debbie. Glad to be back. Yes, good to have you back, Debbie. Right, let's make a start with this painting. So I've already done the little thumbnail sketch. Um, I'm a big, big fan of doing these. Um, a, it uh, gives me an idea how I'm going to paint it. And hopefully it will help you to uh, see how I'm going to paint it as well. So I'm going to go for green in this painting because I never do green paintings and um, I should do a green painting. So I didn't have any green pens to, to do this with. But as you'll see, my lightest value is going to be the sky and the, the lake. There's actually only a very small bit of the lake that's actually visible. Um, but sometimes just a small bit can actually have more impact. That, um, But we'll have the darkest dark against the lightest light. We'll have a few soft reflections in there. Um, so it's all about tonal value. So my lightest tone will be the sky. Then I'll go slightly darker for a distant mountain, which will be blue. Obviously, we'll have a blue sky. And then I'll go more bluey green with these uh, mountains as they get a little bit closer to us or hills, wherever they are. And then just increase the strength of green, but keep it on the blue side. And then save the nice warm greens for the foreground. So that's the plan. So I shall just keep that to one side. So we've got, uh, I've got the paper here, which is um, 11 inches by, no, this is 10 by 14 inches, Saunders and Waterford, 140 pound knot. So I shall try and create a nice loose drawing. And what I'm gonna do is actually gonna draw the, the lake first. So the horizon is about just under halfway. So we'll have the lake, somewhere about here so I shall just go for some abstract marks and then we've got this another landmass here and some trees there and then these distant hills here so there we go that's enough for the drawing I shall just press a little bit um, harder so you can see the lines better. So, so just a nice loose drawing. The tree, I'll just do that afterwards. So we could go for clouds or not clouds. So, um, let me know in the comments where you think we should have clouds on this scene or not. But uh, I don't mind either way. So. I shall use my Isabay brush, the one I bought the other day. I haven't used it a great deal, but uh, let's give it another go. So I need to make sure I don't go too dark with the sky, because if I go too dark with the sky, that's the end of it. So if anything, it's better to wear on the uh, lighter side of things sometimes. So there we go. Nice and light. What I will do is just put a touch of brown in there, not that much, but uh, just to sort of grey it off a little bit, go for atmosphere. So if someone says clouds, okay, we'll go for clouds then. We've got a big sky, so why not? So let's get some white in there. I'm just scrubbing at it there with a fairly dry brush down the bottom here. So I can paint over this down here because it's going to be darker anyway. Let's mop that up. So I might as well paint the uh, the water while I'm down here. So maybe just a 
bit of dry brush, keep the light on there. So clouds. I'll switch to this Skoda Versatile brush. So what colour for the clouds? Just a darker version of what I've just done really. So a bit of blue, a bit of brown, but a lot less water because the paper's quite wet. So if I make it too wet, they'll just disperse to nothing. So slightly thicker paint. And I need to do this before it dries. So nice and confident floaty marks. And try and make sure they're nice and abstract. It started to dry at the top of the paper there, so I shall steer clear of that now. Obviously, they need to get slightly smaller as they come down to the, the foreground. Obviously, I'm going to have a tree coming across here, so perhaps I'll leave that area nice and clear. And That'll do. And let's just soften some of those ones a little bit there. So that's the sky. Best not to mess about with it. You just, with clouds, you just got to put them on, and it is what it is at the end of the day. So I'll switch to the Skoda Perla. It's a size 14. So it looks very dark and uh, gloomy there at the moment, but that will dry quite a bit uh, lighter. Let's now go for some blue. I must remember this has got to be a green painting that uh, remind me if I start veering off to um, orange, as I quite often do. So, blue distant hill. Let's just clean that out a little bit there. We don't want it to be too grey. And get some quite nice grey paintings. So let's try some cerulean blue maybe. So there's distant blue hill there. And we'll go slightly darker. And a touch of yellow ochre. I think that will make a more earthy green. That I'll save the, that's probably hands of yellow there, but um, for the foreground. So just a little suggestion maybe of a few trees. So painting wet into wet. So this at all, but well, this had, this was dry now. So probably wet in a few places, but pretty dry. So paint wet into wet. And I can bring that down to the lake with a nice bit of a sparkle in there as well. I think I'll just go back with that cerulean blue and just make that a little bit more rounded, a bit more interesting. Like that. So it needs some soft reflections here. So all I'll do is just clean my brush off and then just use clean water down here, just wet this area and then just brush into that and then just dry the brush off like that so it's just damp but dry and then maybe just pull some of that down just created a soft edge here so that's all I need for those distant uh, mountains and we're heading towards green so that's good so let's go for some yellow ochre. There's quite a bit of light on this part here. So I want a hard edge here, so that's dry, so that's okay. So we need to steer that towards green, so let's pop a bit of blue on there. But I'll mix it on, let it mix on the paper. Always more interesting to let it mix on the paper. Really load that up. So we're, we've got some green. So let's 
put a bit of just clean water across here. Again, let's go for soft reflections. So just clean water and then just pick up some of that green, maybe and just a lot of this is going to be covered anyway. Just put a bit of green there for a reflection. And maybe just a bit of blue to create a dark. Just put a bit of a dark edge along there. Now, stop fiddling. So these trees here, we can use some blue, a bit of burnt umber maybe, to create a almost a black but then let's just put a touch of this yellow cabin yellow or whatever bright yellow we've got a bit more blue a bit more brown a bit more cobalt blue just get a nice dark green so not a lot of water on the brush there so if i just use the brush on its side and create these trees that perhaps are that shape and my palette's in the way there, but let's just use it there. A brush on its side, a great tool for creating trees. That's fine. And this is damp here. So if I do a tree there, it will soften, but it'll also add connection. So paint that down into there. And I can just create some different shapes trees but we've got a nice bit of softness here and we'll go for some more yellow and a bit more blue brown so warmer yellow here i'll try and paint these wet into wet these trees here and i'll go for putting that shadow across here which is quite nice but i'll need to do that when it's dry so wet into wet here for softness and then we'll do a combination of um wet and onto dry paper as well so just a few darks down here but again this is not the focal point so you don't need to get carried away so need to let it dry now i've got a big um run back there but um much better just forget about it you know that no one's going to look at that they'll be looking at this um if it is a complete disaster you know we'll find something to put there a tree or something i'll use that hair dryer to speed things up So it looks quite stormy. It sounds like Pam's having a storm as well that um, hopefully uh, you're still able to paint. The paint consistency, Pam, was um, very thick here, that um, very watery in the sky and this distant hill here, but um, very watery for the just the main mound here, but very thick paint here um, because I was painting uh, certainly here because it was wet onto to, to wet so it needs to be quite thick so hardly any water so this paint is all like it's just come straight out of the tube so it's um, not runny at all uh, not hard at all so back to a bigger brush so we need to warm things up now in the foreground I'm going to use the Skoda Ultima that I do like the um, which one was this? The Isabay, um, but it's a lot softer. So I think this one's slightly better for a bit of punishment here. So just a touch of water there. So we need to go much stronger in paint here, but not as yellow as that. But again, my plan is mix on the paper, 
much more interesting than uh, mix the color and then put it on. So let's go in with some of this green. I'm just trying to create those textures there that um, you know, could be trees and so on. So I don't know why I don't normally paint green paintings. That um, I've always found they never sold as well, green paintings, although I don't necessarily sell my paintings much these days. That um, I'm more into just making videos now. Um, so I shouldn't really worry about it. But uh, I'm sure lots of people like green paintings. Um, well, I did sell a couple of paintings last week. I did an expo at um, a local craft fair here in France. And I sold a couple of watercolours, which was nice. Right. So, to start to go a little bit darker over here. What we'll do is just give it a little spray. This um, spray here. very green at the moment so let's get rid of some of that green let's go some darker so this now needs to be really thick consistency of paint here because this is so wet here so very thick paint but we'll just paint into that leave a, a little bit of the light to come through and a few taller ones there which will connect the foreground to the uh, all that one up there we could maybe cover that uh, that's gone now that run back and obviously we'll have something over here as well So the um, cadmium yellow or the hands yellow they're quite opaque paints so I find the yellow ochre gives me more of a transparent wash Whereas the um, the other yellow, the, the cadmium yellow, is more opaque, so it's a uh, it can turn to mud easier. So you just have to be careful not to overwork it. Now let's switch to another brush. Uh, yeah, and it's much more fun making videos and trying to sell paintings, Pam. It's a lot more rewarding than uh, banging your head against the wall a lot of the time trying to sell paintings. Right. I suggest some branches here. Don't need to paint them all, just one or two. And maybe we could just pull one or two through here and before this dries I'm going to splash some water on it just to see what it does you know it um I always find with foregrounds like this it can just kind of be a little bit overpowering but to make it loose and spontaneous just throw some water on it uh, this is the um pro art medium 9a brush as a sword brush good for doing these sort of marks uh, and i'll use this to splash the water on there as well i just literally dip my brush in there splash some water on let it run down i've got the page at my paper about a 30 degree angle so it's running down slowly so it is under control uh, Flash that on there, and again, this will either work or it won't. But um, as long as you leave it alone, you've got enough pigment on there, it should be fine. Give it another little spray. What I might do is just use my fingernail just to scratch something out there, on there maybe. And then finally, just. Oh, branch up there. So uh, maybe just a something flying in the sky. Or best we'll have to use the Escoda brush for that. 
So, is it a green painting? I think so. Hi, Chris. Or should I say bonjour, Chris? Ça va? The tableau vert? Right, let's dry it with a hairdryer. Let's take the take off. So again, fairly quick that um, for 20 minutes, but um, for loose watercolors like this, they are quick that um, you kind of not got to hang about because there's a lot of wet into wet going on there. Let's take away the reference photo. There we go, there's me. So there's my little thumbnail sketch there. I'll put that there. So we've got the lightest tone, which is the sky and the water, which that's worked okay. A little bit of softness at the water's edge here, which we did that. Um, and then I wanted to connect all of this up together. So this has kind of been painted as one shape. So again, that's why you need to paint quickly. Um, size this is 11 by 4 10, 10 by 14 which is 26 centimeters by 35 centimeters answer your question there Chris so I had to paint it quick to get all of this softness and the, the wet into wet stuff and to get the connection um, so that's what makes it tricky painting loose like this that it looks easy um, but because you have to be so fast doing it that um, that's why having a little plan so I kind of knew how I was going to paint it so that does help um, so the green has worked okay so that's the dominant color um, but blue obviously works well with green, looks very harmonious, and I suppose this we could call this yellow, but again, harmonious with the, the green. And by splashing that water on here, it really sort of creates this interesting textures that um, when I edit this, or when Kate edits this video, and we put the close up at the end of it, for the, the painting, you'll, you'll see all this a lot better. Um, so, and that blue just gives us a little bit of distance there. And I think the clouds were a good idea that. Um, you know it it just gives that you know more sort of a, a compositional aid to bring you down to the uh, the center of focus here which is the light and the water really so that's that one let's have a go at this one here so slightly bigger this is a 11 by 15 inch, so water sheet. And again, same paper, Saunders and Waterford, 140 pound knot. Um, I think when I paint a full sheet, I'll probably maybe get some thicker paper that, um, although it's okay on the 140 pound knot, but um, there is another little thumbnail sketch. So, Again, much the same as the last painting that uh, most of the watercolours I do are all much the same process, really. So once you've kind of got to grips with it, it um, becomes, you know, a lot easier. So we need light in the background here. So warmth, maybe. And then we've got the trees here, which will be dark, which again, we've got the light against the dark. And then we'll throw these shadows across here. So the focal point really is, is the, sh the light on the bank here and maybe the, the water here. So color wise, I think when I painted it on location, I did blue and orange and that worked quite well. So um, we'll go with that again, I think.
So let's sketch it out. So just change my reference picture. So I shall again try and keep the drawing loose. That, um, but you do need an accurate drawing. That um, it's worth practicing your drawing. Or you know, if you trace, you know, it's not a problem. You know, I've got nothing against tracing. That you know, occasionally I will use a projector. Um, anyone who tells you it's cheating to trace, just ignore them. Artists have used tools for generations, and they always will. And there's a lot of artists who use projectors, but obviously just don't own up to it. But uh, I shall try and be as transparent as I can with you. But uh, obviously I'm not tracing this, so if you can do it freehand, that's great. So not everyone wants to do drawing. You know, some people just perhaps like doing the painting side of things, which is understandable. So keep it nice and loose. And that one, actually, that's quite nice how it forks off there. That's fine. Maybe bring that one across there more. Just take that middle one out. And I think we'll bring that down there a little bit more. Yeah, that's fine. And then we've got another tree here. Obviously the trees, it doesn't matter if I get them slightly wrong. So there we go. Uh, and then another one crossing over there. So we could just um, paint these in, but to, to help perhaps see what we're doing, it'd be a good idea to uh, treat that. And then we've got the main tree here. Go off to there. So it'd be a good idea to make a note of where the um, light is going to come across because it'll be easy to forget and lose that so this is going to be the light area and then there's another one which is going to come down here I've got on the paper so that's going to be light that's going to be light and about it ready for the drawing so let's have a go at painting it So, again, we have to do it in a particular order. So we need to paint the sky, the distant hill, the water. And while I'm doing those, I'll put the warmth on here. And then the second part will be to paint the trees and put the uh, darker part of the banking. So, uh, there we go. So, start with a bit of cobalt blue, maybe. Again, nice brush. This is a bay, nice and soft. It uh, really holds the plenty of water. That's really good. So let's go into some yellow ochre and put some warmth in here. Maybe not as much as that. All right, we can wash that off. So paint up into there. So back to the blue and maybe create a little bit of sparkle. So there's the light on the water and that's running down, but that's fine. Maybe we'll just throw a little bit of warmth in there. So maybe just a touch of red and yellow there, create a bit of an orange. And that's going to be the, the warmth on the bank. So it's an evening scene. It was in the evening when I originally painted this on location. So it would just be nice to um, have a go at doing a, a larger version. I shall just clean my brush off and just mop it up across here. So we'll let that dry. Um, maybe we'll do some prep and I'll just splash some water on there to create some textures because I'll be saving 
some of that uh, behind. And I suppose I could actually paint the distant blue hill. Um, no, I'll dry it first. Dry it first. Back to the Skoda Perla. Um, as we're working on a larger piece of paper now, I shall use the size 16, so it's a little bit bigger. So although in the photo, the distant uh, landmass there is, I've got a lot of warmth on it. I think I will predominantly keep it um, blue, but maybe just a bit of dry brush to suggest some of that light hitting the, uh, the trees in the distance, maybe. But uh, definitely need to keep it simple and a flat shape but uh, that is something i have learned over the years with things like this it is so much better to just keep it simple it will look so much better if i tried to paint that detail in the background it would spoil the painting definitely so there we go it's fine maybe just go a little bit Warmth along the bottom there. Not putting detail in, just adding a bit of that colour. Just let it paint itself. Again, let's just mop that up across there. So I need to dry that because if I painted the trees now, they would just explode and uh, soften on there so we need to dry that again So <clears throat> I shall use the Skoda Versatile brush because this is quite good for painting trees. So I need to make sure I go dark enough with these trees. So, and these are in shade. So I'll perhaps I'll use a little bit of blue in these foreground ones here. So again, I'm not going to paint the detail on the trees that uh, you can see the bark in the photo, but uh, you know, this is just a loose watercolour and nicely loaded up brush so I can do them in one one hit and, and then I'll switch to the other brush the um, sign writing brush mix up plenty of paint and can just paint some branches off of there and I see they cough in all sorts of directions so I tend to find it's just hold the brush towards the end of the, the handle and uh, try and just let it move about and create these abstract shapes and What I need to do <clears throat> is just um, suggest some of these uh, little bits on the tree. But, uh, they're too too straight. Be careful that you don't end up making them wider and wider like that. Sometimes they are best just to leave it alone. 
go with that. Uh, have to just widen that one a little bit. That's okay. So while we've got a lot of water down here on that tree, let's go for just side of the brush. Too much paint on the brush there. Let's just take a little bit off and just try and create that uh, dry brush there. But by painting it wet into wet like this, where it's really wet, this will become one shape. And I need to go a little bit darker than that. So the red and the green cancel each other out and make a, a neutral. So darker at the base. So, there we go. So it uh, also anchors that tree down to the, the bank as well. So again, let's just take off some of that and let's just suggest a few leaves. I want these to look realistic, these trees. Again, this needs to be done while it's all wet. And I can connect it's up there with a few. few there. So while we're over here, let's some longer grass over there. Let's give it a little spray. Come over this side. So same again. With some of that cerulean blue. Give something there. Again, colour-wise, I never really worry too much about colour when I'm doing stuff. I just need a dark, basically. But, you know, you could do them in purple. If it was dark, it probably would look okay. I'm using the other brush here now. The Skoda Perla. It's also good for doing trees. And let's warm it up. The trees are different. It would be more interesting, maybe, if we have a warmer tree. There, the sun's hitting that one, maybe. And again, a bit of texture on the bank there, but doing it while it's wet, need to remember that this is where the light is. So, I think we'll just clean one of these off and I think we can be nice to get some warmth on here. So a bit of that cabin yellow, a bit of red. I have got an orange, but uh, I'm going on the palette, so I just mix it. So there we go, creating a bit of warmth on there. And just need to take some of that paint off. Got too much on there. So, some warmth there, but color everywhere, you know, loses its effect. So, just a bit of color there will be enough. Maybe just a bit there. And then back to the darker mix. Again, just control the, the amount of paint. Way too much. Never panic. It's just a slightly more dense part of the tree there. Connect that up to that tree. And that one. And this is, I think, kind of how I painted the, the one on location. But um, probably simplified it a little bit more, maybe. You need to put some branches in there. So back to... The other brush. Some other colours in there, but some warmth. So more water. And branches all over the place here. So let's just let it criss cross all over. And connection, connect up to there. But the important thing is to maintain, you know, that we can see through the uh, 
through the trees across the lake. So we can now put some maybe a trees over here. This doesn't look like that green, it's too unnatural. Over there, bit of red. So again, make sure I get some sky holes to shine through. And I'm going to paint the trunk of that tree. Uh, nice and dark. Uh, hello to everyone who's joined. That uh, Lunatic has just joined. Hello. So if I've missed any of your messages, I apologise. But I do have a little look at the end. So nice. As I say this. It's still quite damp here, so I've got an option I can dry it, but then I'd rather have this wet to um, let it mix in there. So I also just hope that this paint is a lot thicker, so it should not uh, spread too much. I haven't got away with that. So a nice dark there that's going to disappear up into there. Again, we need some branches and it's a good way I think to make trees look quite realistic by painting them very wet into wet like this because you get connection and you know we don't you know when we see trees out and about we don't uh, look at them you know individual branches and so on we just see them as a whole so by adding all this sort of connection and doing all this wet into wet, it shouldn't turn to mud, hopefully. So I know it's very shiny there at the moment, so it's difficult to see. So let's go for this reflection, uh, the shadow. So maybe a bit of cerulean blue and a bit of red, Just get a bit of colour in there. I need to make sure I go strong enough with the paint. Uh, we'll have a go with that. So again, paint it into the tree. Paint it a little bit into there as well. I'll sort that out in a moment. And this is dried now, so I've kind of lost the uh, opportunity to paint that wet into wet, but that's what happens. And I create a few interesting marks maybe let's put this brush on its side if we're not to lose the light don't need a an edge that's too neat and tidy there As long as we've got some light in there, we should be good. Let's paint that up into there. So we can go quite dark with all this. As long as we've got this area of light, we should be okay. And let's have a dark over here. Break up that light a little bit. So let's give it a spray. And let's dry that off. And then maybe just a, a tree. Well, I'll let that dry naturally. Let's put um, something here because we've kind of got the eye going off the page. So uh, we need a stop there. Uh, maybe just a bit of orange. So not a lot of um, water on the brush there, just mainly paint. And that should be enough to keep the eye in the, the scene. Yeah, so we need to put a few branches there. 
if anyone's got any questions let me know in the comments there that i can try and answer any questions you've got but, um so i'll just talk a little bit after this one for five ten minutes about the consistency of paint I can, which is probably one of the trickiest things to master with watercolor is to know how thick does it need to be so there we go let's throw a bit of water on it just for fun and let that run down connect to these so again this needs to be done just before it dries that um Again, like it like on the the first demo it will just add a little bit of connection and hopefully a little something to this foreground and this brush is really good for doing doing this I'll give it a spray and let water do the work but bit of a pool there so let's just mop that up a little bit so let's dry it off The line there, let's sort that out. Let's just take the paint away for a second. Take the tape off. Again, let's get rid of that reference picture. It's a, don't want to be competing with that because I'll never win. There we go. So, so slightly bigger painting than I normally do uh, for these demos but the same process just slightly bigger brushes so there we go again tonal value that's all it's all about that if you could get that in your mind that all you've got to worry about is getting your tonal values right you won't have a problem um, so we've got light in the sky slightly darker for the distant hill there and there's a little bit of blue there which is quite nice and then the darker tones in the foreground which tend to come forward and uh, the warmth we've just got a few little bits of warmth in here that you know if we put warmth everywhere it just loses its effect so it's got a kind of an evening feel there and you know there's long cut grass here so just by twiddling around with the uh, the brush there that uh, creates all this uh, effects here so um, it's all quite interesting so there you go so I've got to 10 minutes keep the hour going so let's just grab some scrap paper and talk to you about um, consistency and before I do that um, say a quick thank you to patrons but I really do appreciate the uh, help by being patrons it's um it's uh, no, really really good really appreciate it and obviously on youtube all your likes and comments that um I know there's a, a few of you who regularly comment and that's really appreciated but uh, i do appreciate that and i've got a i've got a list here you see things to talk about because i forget i do the end of my video or my live stream and then i realize i never even looked at my list of stuff i was supposed to talk about I've got a workshop coming up uh, end of the month on the 27th of April, which is a Saturday. Um, so 
is um, links in the description and on my website um, if you want to join join that. And the other day I posted a French audio demonstration, which the French audio wasn't great, but uh, hopefully I'll get better. Um, but obviously that was just a one-off that uh, I'm trying to learn French, you see, so uh, we thought it'd be quite useful to learn some French words for a painting. So, consistency of paint. The first wash, which is normally the sky, nine times out of 10, if you're doing a landscape, it's the sky and you need it to be watery so it's hard to sort of say you know 80 percent water 20 percent uh, pigment you know it's just a guess really that is but it needs to be almost sort of transparent just the water there really and let's just do two of those and the next one which will be then the clouds which then needs to be thicker paint. So I tend to pick up more pigment. And again, it depends on how wet your paper is. You know that if you do the clouds quite quickly, you probably need thicker paint. Whereas if you wait five minutes, you probably don't need a thicker paint. So that's why watercolor is so tricky. Um, so thicker paint. So that's quite early. So that will disappear to nothing um, pretty much. But if you wait a little while that um, We'll just wait a little while for that. And then when I'm doing stuff like um, the tree, the leaves and so on, that's thicker paint again, because you need, you know, these dark, crisp, because I'm normally putting these leaves against the light of the paper. Whereas if I have the paper or the pigment too watery, you know, you, you just don't get the same impact. And then what happens is you tend, you've got to go over it again. So then it becomes, overworked so there we are. so it's not just about the um, consistency of paint it's about timing as well so that was the same consistency of paint as that one however that has kind of spread to almost you know, no definition whereas this one has got definition so the only way you'll learn that is by practice um, to set, to know when how dry the paper is because if you try and go over it again, you know, it just ends up looking overworked. But uh, a lot of the time, if um, I've got to this sort of stage and, you know, I'm not looking, it's not looking quite good, try that method of just throwing some water on and uh, create uh, all this nice stuff here where it's all connecting up. And then you can, you know, paint into this, you know, and, on scrap bits of paper, you know, practice doing this sort of stuff. And once you know, you, you know about tonal value, that that's the most important. The next thing to realize and always be mindful of is this bead of water here. That um, that is what will transform your paintings. But once you've got this, you know, you can use that to paint around the top of a, a rooftop maybe. You can create all sorts of stuff with the bead there and you know, leave highlights there. And if you want to change your edge, that we've got a hard edge here, all you've got to do is just take some clean water and just soften it. So that's the other thing to worry about. So, you know, it's consistency of paint, how dry the paper is or how wet the paper is the bead to connect everything up and then your edges you know we've got hard edges here that works fine for a rooftop but you know quite often you may want a soft edge so you need a combination of hard and soft edges in your painting so uh, there we go and the other thing I want to talk about was um, I've got an oil painting channel which I know people on Patreon will know about that so if you fancy having a go at oil painting this was a, a demo i did the other day um quite sort of loose abstract brushwork but again it's a method that hopefully you can follow i just use a very limited palette with um just a few colors uh, that was a previous demo that's on patreon quite a simple one that one so uh, have a think about painting in oils if you don't already so there we go we'll just have another quick look at the paintings before we call it a day 
So that was the, the first one, the green painting. So I've proved I can do green paintings. Uh, might not do many, but um, sometimes uh, it's good to uh, go out your comfort zone. So quite pleased with that. So quite stormy, but hopefully um, Pam hasn't had to leave with the storm. And again, same method as that one, really. Painted them the same. But, um, sky first, tonal values, wet into wet for the sky. You know, connected all this up so it's all one shape. So really the same process as that. Did the sky, painted this as one shape. And I find most of my paintings are all the same. So uh, there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, I'll see you next on the Saturday challenge. And um, again, thanks for being here and um, watching the videos and liking and commenting. And um, I'll see you soon. Bye for now.